Welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and this is Episode 2, uh, Means to Enlightenment. Um, just for a quick review, last week was our first episode, and we basically defined enlightenment, and we're going to actually review the elements of enlightenment just briefly before we go into the uh, kind of like the means to it uh, this time. But, you know, very simply, to not complicate it, to be enlightened become, is to be very, very happy, very, very good, uh, very sane, and, and very wise. By sanity, I mean, for example, like, you know, understanding, not believing, but understanding that God, as, a, as this being, presence, whatever, that, that governs everything, must exist, um, and certain other kinds of, like, you know, realities. Okay. So, so let's just briefly review the elements of enlightenment, and then we'll go, go into like the means of becoming more enlightened. All right, just one more thing. This is like so. This this show is about like understanding what enlightenment is because you know it's not really you know a term that that has been clearly defined in either philosophy or science or religion. You know, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, certain religions have terms that mean something like hap in like enlightenment, but they don't really mean enlightenment. So a lot of what this show is going to do is it's going to present a, um, a kind of an understanding of enlightenment. Um, and so like this, this show is about either like, you know, understanding and hap enlightenment, becoming, you know, enlightened or becoming more enlightened. All right. So, um, so let's review the, the elements of, of enlightenment. And this may not be an all-inclusive list. I added one from the last episode. I'll probably, most definitely, add more as the series progresses. All right, so the first element, the very important element, is like happiness. You've got to be really, really happy to be enlightened. And I'm like, the average level of happiness here in the United States is like about 70%. And the average person, regardless of how happy they are, only spend about 54% of their time being happy. You know, I think about 20% they're neither happy nor unhappy, and about 30% th people are like unhappy. And so, like, you know, basically to be in, in enlightened, you know, I think you got to be up in like the top like 95% of the level of happiness, and you know, I would I would guess easily like the top 90% of how how happy you are each day. And so, like, we're going to devote a lot more time to happiness next week but but that's you know that's i mean everything is about happiness all right you know aristotle said that happiness is the only end in life everything else is a means so enlightenment is about happiness okay and that's that's what it's mo most about it's not just about our happiness it's the happiness of all sentient beings actually all right so the, the next element of enlightenment so let's say one is like super happy and one is like a criminal one is just like you know getting their happiness at the expense of other people or animals whatever sentient beings that's not enlightenment. So, like, in other words, to be really enlightened, you have to be really, really good. Um, I think, I mean, like, you know, in, in today's world, uh, it's, it's pretty impossible to be enlightened if you're not a vegan. You know, I mean, you, you could conceivably, like, buy your, your meat from farms that treat the animals well, but, you know, I don't know. It, it's, uh, I, I would think in today's world where one can get, you know, Near, just easily as much nutrition as one needs without encumbering animals at all. I think, you know, veganism would, would be a requirement. And of course, it's, it's not just about how do we treat, we treat animals, it's how we treat each other. Um, uh, a third element of enlightenment is truth. This is like this sanity um, kind of like condition that, you know, you, you know, you can't be really enlightened and believe, for example, in a Garden of Eden, or, or that the earth is flat, or that the sun, you know, revolves around the earth, um, or, the, or that climate change isn't happening. I mean, you, this, this is, doesn't just pertain to, to physics or spirituality. It also pertains to, you know, to, um, well, in this case, politics, but it, it's really actually science, you know, climate science and all. So, in other words, you can't be really deluded. Um, about the nature of reality. I, I just finished a 216 episode series on the illusion of free will. So you really can't be enlightened believing in free will. And we'll, we'll do an episode on, you know, how to tell whether one is enlightened or not, you know, among our leaders, you know, these gurus and sages and, you know, people who, who claim to be enlightened. But again, like, if, if you don't get that, that, that free will is an illusion, again, just like not being good or not really being happy, 
I, you can't really say one is enlightened if, if one doesn't get that. All right, um, the next element is love. Love is like this, this glue that binds us together. It's kind of like, what is love? We'll explore it. Um, it has various definitions. I think when we relate it to ourselves and each other, it's really like when you love someone, you care about their happiness. You are doing things actively. You're thinking things to help them become happier, okay? And I think love has an element of, of appreciation. You're, you're appreciating the, the, the good qualities in another person. You're, you're treating them kindly. Um, so again, w but I think, you know, and the love, love is, I think, you know, sometimes, for example, yeah, you might have a guru who's like out in the, the jungle alone for years and maybe blissed out, but it's very difficult to be good you know, or, or to, to experience at least love of other people. Certainly you can experience love of reality, love of oneself. But I, th I think in, in today's society, you know, it's important for the, for the element of goodness to be good, to be among others, demonstrating one's love by helping others to become happier, good, uh, more good, more enlightened, et cetera. Et cetera. All right, so um, love's another element. The next one is spirituality, and that has to do with, you know, understanding that God must exist. It's not a belief. Um, if you define God as everything, well, guess what? The universe is everything. If you define God as is commonly defined as all-powerful or omnipotent, well, guess what? The laws of nature are omnipotent, all-powerful. They govern everything. Nature is like the universe. So, uh, so basically, now, you know, there's some things like some people believe that God is all good. Now, you know, God, you know, if God is everything and God governs everything, that God can't logically be all good, you know, because there's some things in the world that aren't good. Um, in the Bible, it says, like, think in Isaiah, you know, God, God himself is quoted by Isaiah saying, well, I, I create light, I create darkness, I create good, I create evil. So, like, so, you know, this, this is like the spirituality component. It's more so, it's more than just the truth aspect of it. It's just like trying to develop a stronger and stronger connection with the spiritual dimension, with God, with the oneness of the universe. Um, and, and I think, all right, so that leads us to the next element of, hap of enlightenment, which is meditation. I mean, with, with happiness, with goodness, with um, love, spirituality, the means to these elements, you know, for the most part, to a great extent, is meditation. You can, like, you can meditate, you can focus on the feeling of happiness. Again, I, next week I'll, I'll really I'll concentrate on that. Just, like, go through the steps to, to access one's happiness directly. But with meditation, meditation is simply focus. So one can focus on one's thoughts, one can focus on one's breath, on a mantra, and depending on what one focuses on, one can do a body scan uh, meditation where one is focusing on sensations throughout one's body, and these different techniques for meditation, you know, produce different results uh, to a certain extent. I mean, basically, they, they all tend to kind of like relax uh, people. Actually, not all, but, but most do. You know, they, they, um, they create a peacefulness and, um, and again, they, they help with the spirituality. So me meditation is, is probably the, the, um, the foundation of, of, of being enlightened, you know, being enlightened. What, what you do in meditation helps you understand the nature of reality, ha helps you understand the nature of enlightenment. All right, personal health, you know, you should be kind of like, you know, um, weight conscious, uh, food conscious, you know, exercise, sleep enough and all. That, that, that makes sense. Uh, the next one um, is like this concept of, of inness. So like, you know, sometimes we're going through our days and we feel out of it. We feel disconnected from reality, okay? Um, not interested in what we're doing, bored perhaps. You know, there's, there's different ways to describe this. So like part of, part of being enlightened is to maintain a connection with reality, to feel more and more that you're in it instead of out of it, okay? Um, and the last element that I want to describe today, I didn't describe it yesterday, uh, or last week rather, um, but I think it's important. Um, I think to be enlightened, um, it requires a certain level of intelligence, okay? Um, you know, because like to, to discern right from wrong uh, requires intelligence. Um, 
wisdom, the wisdom of, of, of how to become happier, how to love people. You've got to understand people to love people. Um, these, these elements require some, some uh, measure of, of intelligence. Having, having said that, I think um, it's mainly intelligence in, in logic and reasoning. Um, in, in being objective, you know, there's some, you know, ostensibly intelligent people who believe they have a free will. No, they're, they're allowing their, um, their personal needs and ideology to trump their reason, to, to override what would make sense. So, so I'm not saying that one has to be super brilliant to be enlightened, but you have to at least be intelligent enough to override these, these kinds of influences that corrupt our, our reasoning, that, that, ba that lead us to mistake right and wrong and lead us uh, astray in various ways. All right, so like, let's go on to the, the main um, aspect of the show. So like, basically, this is the means to enlightenment. Again, like, I'm going to start, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go over this next week in more detail, but like, the first means to ha enlightenment is to achieve your happiness in direct means. And what I mean by that is that generally we're taught, well, if you go through school and graduate and get a good job and make money and make friends and marry and have kids and all this stuff, then you're going to be happy. Okay, like, yes, that, that does work to a certain extent. In a lot of ways it doesn't work. In other words, like here in the New York metropolitan area, you know, if you're a person earning over $70,000 a year, you could be earning $500,000. It's not going to make you any happier than if you were working, uh, earning $70,000, you know, in general. Um, and like, for example, if you've got a, a bachelor's degree and you believe that like getting your PhD is going to make you happier, no, it doesn't. Uh, being intelligent, more intelligent doesn't make you happy. So basically like the point of this is like we are taught, we're conditioned by our civilization, um, society to seek happiness indirectly, whereas like, you know, part of enlightenment is understanding that we can like access our happiness, uh, prolong it, you know, moment to moment, hour to hour, day to day, week to week. Uh, and make it stronger directly, simply because, because we are hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain, simply because it feels good to, to feel happy. All right, again, that's going to be a, a major part of this enlightenment kind of a, um, description and path, so we're going to spend a lot of time on that. Okay, the, another means to enlightenment is like learning. You know, um, there's a saying, a wise person learns from their mistakes, a wiser person learns from the mistakes of others. So there is so much spiritual literature out there on how to meditate, how to be happy in, in various ways, how to be good, what goodness is, what is the nature of, of, of our reality, how, how is it that, that God exists and that, that we're one with the universe. So, I mean, like, you don't want to reinvent the wheel every day. You want to, like, access what's already been done. You don't want to, like, you know, again, so, so learning is, is a very powerful means to enlightenment. Um, here's one that, that it's very, very rarely um, utilized. I don't use it nearly as much as I should, but it's basically uh, audible and ideally a higher level is silent self-talk. And what I mean is like ordinarily like let's say if I'm walking across town, I've got these thoughts that are coming through uh, into my mind from who knows where, right? And they're generally images, thought fragments, they're not like complete sentences, they're not complete paragraphs, right? Um, they're just, you know, they're fragmented, they're not all very clear, they're not all very strong. What happens, let's say I were to walk through town or like, or like be alone in, in, in my home, and, and rather than just like allowing this stream of thoughts to come into my mind, if I were to just verbalize my thoughts, like I'm doing now. In other words, let's say I wasn't doing this show, and let's say I was doing this for myself to kind of like integrate and understand these concepts more. What, what happens is when you verbalize your thoughts, the thoughts become stronger, they, they become more clear, okay? And again, you can learn to do this. You can learn to create complete sentences, complete paragraphs in this way without verbalizing the thoughts, but kind of like um, thinking in sentences silently in, in one's mind. Again, the, 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 the reason for this is to, to clarify the, the, the stream of thoughts that, that is constantly coming into our minds and, and to make the thoughts stronger. You know, it's very, very effective with that. Okay, again, I mentioned the, the royal path to enlightenment uh, is meditation. I mean, like meditation, is, it, all meditation is, is, is focused. I, I started meditating about uh, 42 years ago 
and I learned transcendental meditation, which which requires a mantra. Basically, you repeat a sound, a sound in Sanskrit, um, just over and over. And or but like there are other ways. Like the, the Zen meditators will meditate on their breath. I've I've, exper I've experimented with meditating on body scan. What I meditate on now is the feeling of happiness, which is like a very wise and powerful meditation because it combines the the effects of meditation with the um, this practice and tapping into this feeling of, of happiness at will, you know, moment to moment, and then lengthening it, lengthening it. And I had a long day yesterday, and uh, and making it stronger. And incidentally, I found this great place in Irvington for, for meditation. It's right on the water. Um, so, you know, because it's good to meditate in groups uh, if, if you can. This, this, you know, this first time I was there, there were, I think, about 30 people there. So, I mean, meditating individually is great. Meditate as much as you can. You know, ideally people start off 20 minutes twice a day, but like if you can meditate hours, you know, rather than watching TV or whatever, you know, it, it, it's, it's very useful. So anyway, we're going to, again, since meditation is so important to all this, we're going to um, devote a lot of attention to it. Okay, um, body work, exercise, stretching, massage, you know, yoga, going to the gym, walking, you know, um, stretching. But that's important, you know, like we do, uh, it, it, this is a product of our, our civilization where everybody's sitting around too much. We don't get out, you know, in, in, you know, in fr with, for fresh air enough, a lot, a lot of us. Um, and, and we don't move our bodies enough. You know, I think we were designed over like, you know, tens of thousands, um, hundreds of thousands of years. Of, you, can see, you know, I mean, if you go back to like, you know, um, Lucy and all our, our, our ancestors, millions of years, whatever, um, we were designed to move, and so like it, it's very important to just like um, get some exercise to just like you know keep the body working as, as well as you could. All right, prayer and conversation with God is the next means to happiness. To kind of like acknowledge that you don't have a free will. That the thoughts that are coming into my mind right now, the thoughts that are coming into your mind as you're listening to this, are not coming from you. You're they're basically like coming from out. You know, what, what you can describe as God is like, you know, God basically governs the whole of reality. So these thoughts that I'm thinking are actually God's thoughts and, and your thoughts are God's thoughts. And so like the idea is when, once you get this, once you get the we're just manifestations of God's mind, God's consciousness, God's will, then we can cultivate also the habit of conversing with God directly. Just like, you know, we're, we tend to converse with each other, but in a certain sense, it's kind of like one puppet conversing with another puppet. It's indirect. So when you converse with God, it's still not as direct as God conversing with God without, you know, channeling it through your mind and brain and body, but it's much more of a direct connection if you're a human being than, than talking to someone who is, of course, a manifestation of God also, and, and, you know, just communicating to God indirectly in that way. All right, so it's, you know, it's prayer. You know, prayer, you can ask for things. You can, you know, be grateful for things, express gratitude. But you can ask a lot of questions. You can, like, you know, uh, God, you know, prayer with God can and should be, to a great extent, conversation. You know, just a, it's a consciousness. You can ask, you know, get information and, and just establish uh, more, a greater and greater intimacy with God. Okay, and then again, like, conversations with others. So, like, so, yeah. We, um, when we talk with others and when we think about things fine, we get a, an understanding of, of, of what, you know, of whatever we're thinking about. But when we talk to others, like, you know, two heads are better, better than one. Enlightenment is really enhanced by giving yourself the opportunity to talk about it. You want to talk about the process of enlightenment. You want to talk about, you know, what enlightenment is, what, what, what the various means of all the stuff we're, we're, you know, addressing here today. You want to talk about it, and if you can talk about it with people, um, that, that, you know, is, it, it just helps clarify things. You know, they will think of things that you haven't thought about from a different perspective and all. And naturally, in, 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 in ascertaining whether something is right or wrong, you know, just exploring it or something is wise, I think wisdom is a, a very important uh, part of enlightenment. You know, when you, when you, um, when you communicate with people, again, you, you just, it's, you're, you're adding two perspectives, or if it's in a group, you're adding a group uh, perspective. And a lot of times, not all the time, uh, but a lot of times, it helps you to uh, gain greater access to the truth more quickly, more strongly, more clearly, 
than you might otherwise, you know, if you're just thinking about things, especially if you're just allowing the thoughts to come into your mind and you're not actually verbalizing like I suggested before. Okay, um, being out in the world. Um, again, you know, it is possible to be a, a yogi who, uh, who lives in a jungle for uh, years, never sees anyone, and attains, you know, sublime levels of bliss and enlightenment and peace and, you know, connection with, with the universe and all. It is, that, that's certainly possible. But again, I think a, a component of goodness, of being a good person, requires this, there's this concept of noblesse oblige that I talked about last week, that just, you know, those um, to which um, much is given, uh, much is demanded. You know, in other words, like, if, if you've got, like, you know, um, um, wisdom and, 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 and happiness, you want to share this stuff with others. You want to help others who may not um, be at your level in, in any of this. Or, you know, if you find somebody who's at a... At a at a level above yours in any of these, because like you know, it's pretty impossible not to. You know, we can like perfect most of these things, or, or not perfect, but just get much better at them. But generally, you know, um, when you meet anybody, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be like you know, somebody who's homeless on the street. They're going to be better at uh, than you at something. You know, they might be more humble, more you know, whatever. So 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 this. Conversation with others helps you to teach, helps you to learn, and also, like, we are social beings, you know, like, it, it just, like, it provides a, a kind of connection. It helps us to be in, you know, to this, this concept of inness, to feel in it. Okay, um, so, um, so, yeah, being out, I think I may have lost my, uh, I don't know if I was on seven conversations with others or being out in the world, because I, I really had a long day yesterday. My, my mind is a bit fried. But, um, so being out in the world, just like, that. yeah, you don't want to be a yogi out. I mean, you can do that, but, like, I think enlightenment, to a great extent, requires that you bring that stuff back and share it with others. Uh, learning, you know, no, I <laughs> got this. All right, learning was number two. All right, teaching. Teaching is the last means to enlightenment. Yeah, so like what happens is like you learn things, and as you teach them, as you teach them, you learn them better. You know, any teacher will tell you, they, you know, there's a saying that, you know, um, a teacher learns more from their students than they teach them sometimes. You know, I mean, that's, you know, you got to take that in, in perspective. But, um, but, yeah, a lot of times when you, when you teach people whatever it is, they will ask questions. They may not get things. And like sometimes it challenges you to, to, to actually understand what you're saying. You know, um, sometimes you think you know what you're saying, then somebody will ask you a question, and then, huh, I, I, didn't, um, I didn't think it through completely. So, it, it, you know, teaching others helps you gain a more clear understanding of whatever it is that you're teaching. All right, so we've got about four minutes left uh, in this episode. Just a few questions that um, we can, like, explore. Why should we want to be enlightened? Um, well, I mean, like, I think, you know, we're hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So, like, a lot of these elements of enlightenment also lead to happiness. But, you know, really, happiness is our main desire. So, but, but the, I think the, the, it's about wisdom. In other words, like, enlightenment is not just about becoming happier. It's also becoming, about becoming more virtuous, more good. And so what happens is the more we become enlightened, the more we become sane and, 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 uh, and wise, we can help create uh, a more enlightened world, a happier world, a more virtuous world. And the benefit of that is that that's going to make our happiness that much easier. You know, the happiness does take effort. You know, some, um, to a certain extent, sometimes it just comes to us as a gift. You know, we don't, we just like, you know, soak it in, whatever, but a lot of times, it, you know, great happiness requires ha effort. So to the extent that, again, we become enlightened, the happier happiness becomes easier, and it's easier for us to create a, a happier world. Okay, so what is the socio sociological goal to individual enlightenment? I think I just went over that. It's just um, the idea of as we become enlightened as individuals, like, I'm thinking like a thousand years from now, everybody's going to be enlightened um, Everybody's going to be enlightened, you know, because I mean, this is like, you know, think about it, a thousand years. Um, yeah, I, I can't see that not happening because, like, you know, the, the sharing the information on the Internet. Okay, so how do we know if we're enlightened? Well, I mean, like, you know, you know if you're really, really, really happy. <laughs> you know if you're happy, like, 
um, a great part of, of, of each day, you know whether you're being good or not. If, if, you're, if you're not a vegan, you know you're not enlightened, all right? You, you got to be really, really good. That's a very important component. And, and I guess, you know, like, it's the learning, you know, just there, there are a lot of concepts like oneness, um, feeling, um, feeling at peace, um, a lot of like these concepts from Buddhism, from different religions that, you know, ex explain some of these more esoteric elements of, of, en of enlightenment. And um, so that, that can help you um, to, to understand, you know. And, and the other thing, again, there's, there's levels of enlightenment. One can be enlightened and then one can, then as one is enlightened, one becomes more and more and more enlightened. I'm not sure, I, there's probably no, no end to that, um, you know, that elevation, whatever. Okay, which is an answers my next question. <laughs> what are the different levels of enlightenment? Um, it's different spiritual traditions, you know, posit some, and we'll devote episodes to them, you know, like in some, um, I think in Buddhism, like to, to extinguish all the desires is one element. All right, we've got less than uh, 50 minutes left. So like how to tell false or mistaken teachers from true ones, you know, we'll, we'll get into that in detail. So, all right, so like that's all we have time for today. Next week is a very important show. We're going to talk about the, the main component of enlightenment, which is happiness. And we're going to talk about how to access this happiness very directly through conscious effort. It's really like the practice of becoming happier just by willing the happiness, extending that as one would extend the meditation, and strengthening it as one would, let's say, lift uh, weights in a gym. It's no more complicated than that. But, you know, we'll go through the steps and, and the details. All right, thanks for watching. I will see you next week on the Ortega Path to Enlightenment.